right. And welcome to class. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good night. And ow, it's a good day to begin. We're going to talk today about lesson two in our book. We're going to talk about I'm tall and thin. Well, okay. One of those is true for me uh, is that I am tall. Okay. I'm not thin. Okay. Okay. I got the joke. I understand. Okay. I'm not thin. I want to be thin, but for right now, I am just tall. Yes, I do know that I am tall. I am 191 and a half centimeters tall. That is my height. Uh, I am uh, kilograms, which uh, I'm not going to mention, but I, and no, I do know that I am a little bit strong, uh, heavy. So I will tell you again that I am kilograms tall, uh, heavy. So it's always a good thing. Now, we're going to talk today about describing people. What do people look like? We're going to talk about their outside appearances. We're going to talk about how you can help find someone. We're going to describe about them. And we'll set up describing different people through our lesson today. So let's get started. So we start off today with uh, some vocabulary. Elderly, good-looking, handsome, heavy, middle-aged, pretty, short, tall, thin, and young. Now with these, we have a lot of, of words that are opposites, they're antonyms. An antonym is a word that we're looking for the opposite. Elderly, the opposite would be young. Tall, short, good looking, ugly, or homely. We have different words that we're looking for. Now let's talk about the words handsome and beautiful, because those words come up a lot and pretty as well. Handsome is a great word. And we usually consider handsome a masculine word. It's a word that's used mostly when you're describing men. You can use handsome to describe a woman, but when you use handsome to describe a woman, you're saying that she's kind of either looks more like a man or she's not really that beautiful. At the same time, we don't use beautiful and pretty to talk about men. Usually we'll use those to describe women, unless you're talking about somebody who really has uh, a lot of makeup and things. And yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick on uh, Korean fashion models and uh, idols for a moment. They do wear a lot of makeup and you could, refer to some of them as pretty or beautiful because they do have a lot of makeup. But in general, we use handsome with men and pretty or beautiful with women. We don't usually interchange them except for children. For children, you can mix and match them, it's okay. But for the most part, try to separate them. Now you have middle-aged. Now middle age goes in between elderly and young. So it's not a synonym, it's not an antonym, it's kind of in the middle. But we have other ways that we can describe it as well. So for this one, how would you put them? What do these describe? Now, for short, tall, thin, do these describe people's age, their height, their, uh, their looks, or their build? Now, with their build, you may look at people and say, hmm, that person looks really, really thin, or that person looks like an athlete, or that person looks like me, very overweight and fat. That's okay. That's their build. Some people, my build is very big. I have very big shoulders, big hips. I've always been a big guy. Even when I was uh, thinner, I was always a big guy. And if I continue to lose weight, I will still be a big guy. All right. So how do you describe that? And then think about how you would describe yourself. Now, here in Korea, it, we come into a problem when we're describing Korean friends or friends from Asia. And that comes to people description. We can talk about people's hair color, eye color, but we run into a big problem. 
most of the world has brown or black hair and brown eyes. Now, I know what you may be saying, my eyes aren't brown, my eyes are black. No, your eyes are really brown in color. If you have a black guy, then it's going to be, oh no, boom! <laughs> oh no, I have a black eye. A black eye is after somebody punched you and your eye actually gets a bruise. That's a black eye. Your eye color is brown. Now, whether it's light brown or dark brown, that's up to you to look in the mirror. But if you look closely in bright light, you'll notice that your eyes are actually a shade of brown. And that's where it becomes a problem describing people. Uh, we have to deal with the fact that a lot of people in the world, over three quarters of the people in the world have black hair, brown eyes as their normal eye color and hair color. Skin color can change from pale, uh, almost um, a peach color to different shades of brown uh, to almost black in color. So using skin color can help us, but be careful when you do that because you do risk offending people. Um, my opinion, my personal thing is if, it's a, if it looks like a duck, it walks like a duck, call it a duck. But just be sensitive. Other people may not be as open to that description as you may doesn't mean use it as an offensive term. It just means when you're describing someone, use the most accurate term that you can to describe them. So I could describe some of my friends from high school. I had very good friends in high school who were black and dark haired. And I had friends who were peach and light skin. I even had one of my friends in high school was an albino. And if you don't know what an albino is, an albino is somebody who has no skin color at all or has no melatonin in their skin. They're white skin and red eyes. Um, a good friend of mine, I miss that one. Look him up. Anyway, this is how you describe people. So think about how you describe yourself. Think about what terms you could use. Now, I know some of you out there are going to say, oh, I'm too fat. I'm too this. Take a hard look at yourself, a hard look at yourself. Are you really fat? Probably not. And I'm gonna tell you this right now, I tell all my students every year this, I don't care what you look like. I don't care what your personal image, what you think about yourself is, oh, I don't, <laughs> I guarantee you, there are at least a million people out there at least a million people who would love to change bodies with you. To have your skin, your eyes, your hair, your body. Even if you're not happy with it, I guarantee you there's at least a million people out there who would love to be you instead of being them. You have to find the love for yourself. I know this is not English, but you have to find the love for yourself. And all of you have it. You all have that attractiveness within you. Just embrace it. Okay, so let's move on. Now, we're going to listen to a conversation. Now, Nathan is out and he's with his wife and they're shopping and he's lost his wife. And uh, that's never a good thing, but in a crowded place, it's always hard to keep track of everybody that, that you're with, especially if you go off and look at for different things. So, he is looking for his wife and he's trying to get some help to find her. Now, when I was growing up, my father and I and my brother all have a unique whistle. And so when we're in a store, we've got a very loud, unique whistle, not, you know, super loud, but we can whistle and up. Oh, I'm looking for my, my father. He's over there. It helps us to find location. It's not something that everybody does, but it's something that my family has done ever since I was a little kid. And so listen to Nathan try to find his wife. Excuse me, I'm looking for my wife. What does she look like? Well, she's tall and thin. Does she have red hair? No, 
My wife has dark brown hair. What's she wearing? A blue skirt and a white blouse. Is that her by the changing room? Yes. I guess she wants that coat. All right. So she's out shopping. The clerk has managed to help point him in the right direction. Be careful of who you choose to ask for directions and for help, but an employee is usually a good place to start. Uh, one of the things, I know you're too young now, but when you have children, be sure to teach your children on asking for you by name. If you come up and say, oh, I'm looking for my mommy. Uh, what's your mommy's name? Mommy. Be sure to help them understand names. Um, to illustrate this point, when I was, I guess I was about seven years old, six years old, and we were at Disneyland uh, at Epcot Center in Florida, and I got separated from my mother and father. But as soon as I got separated, I found uh, an employee who could help me, and I said, are you looking for your mom and dad? I said, yes, I don't know where they are. I said, who are they? I said, Daryl and Eileen Bet. I knew their name. And all of a sudden they were able to track my mom and dad down and were able to reunite me within 15, 20 minutes. Not a very long time. I thought it was longer, but I was a kid. And so it was probably closer to 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes that I was gone. But that's what you need to do. You find out your parents' names, make sure that you can use that. And when you become parents in the future, make sure you teach your kids that when they're out in public is that if you get lost, you're looking for me and know my name. All right. So with this, we also have a chance to replace the dialogue. Now, Nathan, I can't find my wife. Uh, is, is her hair red? Think of different ways that we could ask different questions. Now, he says in the first line, excuse me, I'm looking for my wife. You can change it out. Excuse me, I can't find my wife. Excuse me, can you help me find my wife? Excuse me, I don't know where my wife is. I seem to have lost her. Would you mind helping me? Again, with our previous lesson, I said find five or six different ways to greet people. I'm going to say the same thing. How do you rephrase a question? Use it in different ways. So try to match these up and try to come up with your own versions. So is her hair red? Is her hair long? Does she have uh, styled or permed hair? What are some other ways we could describe people? We'll be using this in class and having some fun with this in the next week. But practice it. See what you can come up with with different ways to talk about the same question. Now, asking about appearance. Now, when we talk about appearance, we wanna see what's on the outside. We're gonna talk about hairstyle, hair length. We're gonna talk about uh, their body shape. Are they thin, fat, tall, short? How would you describe them? And how would you ask a question about that? I want you to think about your best friend. Now, I know it's hard to describe your best friend, but think about your best friend so that you can describe them when they, you come to class and try to avoid, my friend has black hair and brown eyes and is tall and thin. Be more specific. How is their face shape? Is their face oval? I have a very oval face. And if you meet my father, my father and I look very similar, except for the fact that my father's head is round and mine is oval. That's the only real difference that you can see between us, uh, especially now as I'm getting older. I've, got, I've actually got almost as much white in my beard as my father does. Uh, I still have most of my color in my mustache, but my father, I'm getting there. I've got quite a bit of white going in there, especially over on this side. But that's neither here nor there. We're going to talk about this. We're going to use this in class to discuss describing people and matching who those people are and what they look like. So now, here we're going to listen to two people describing their friends. See if you can help match 
who these people are from their description. Now, as they describe people, number them one, two, three, four, five, so that you know who is who in the party. And it's the two people on the right are trying to identify the other people in the party. Great party, isn't it? Yeah, but I don't know many people here. You don't? Do you know Paula? No. Oh, well, that's her over there. Do you see her? She has blonde hair, and she's in her early 30s. She's wearing a black dress. She looks nice. She's talking to Reggie, her cousin. Yeah. And where's Wally? I've heard of him, but I don't know him. This party is for him. He's over there. What does he look like? He's short and a little heavy. He's wearing a green sweater. How old is he? He's 22. And who's that man by the food table? The middle-aged one? That's Adam. He's Paula's older brother. He's really thin. Oh, look. Valerie is here. Who? My friend Valerie. See her? She's really pretty. She has black hair and she's wearing a blue dress. The one by the door? Yeah. Do you want me to introduce you? Sure. Excellent. So, we're able to find out who is who in this little conversation and who is meeting and what's going on. Now, underneath here, it has some statements that are wrong. Try to fix them and make them correct. Make them the way that they should be to describe the people in this party. Now, they describe the people in the party. The easiest way to have described the people would have just been to say, oh, green shirt, uh, blue pants, uh, pink dress. We would have been able to describe the people, pick them out. But it's not always the most polite way to do it. So try to find polite ways to describe people. She described uh, Paula, for example, as being in her uh, 20s and having blonde hair. And that just means that she's young. And that uh, Adam, her older brother, but Adam has gray hair. So maybe there's a big difference in age. We don't know. We weren't given that kind of information. But we were given enough to be able to tell who is who in our conversation. So now, think about people who are famous. Think about people that you want to know more about, where they're from. For example, in this picture, you see Brad Pitt. And Brad Pitt, he's a good actor. He's been around for a long time. He is starting to get a little bit older. And he's been around into lots of good movies. And think about other movie stars and people that are famous. We're going to use this in class and talk about famous people. So. We're going to have some fun with this, so get ready for a fun activity when we do this activity. So now, let's go ahead and move on to the homework. That's what I thought you'd say. I thought you'd say you'd be ready and happy for the homework. So let's go in and have some homework time. All right, so the first part, how would you describe people? I need you to go in. And think about these words. These are some of the similar words that we that we saw earlier. Feel free to add some extra synonyms and antonyms. And we talked about antonyms being the opposite. Synonyms are things that are almost the same. And I do mean almost the same. They're not exactly the same. Close. In the same area. But they don't have to be exactly the same. They can be a little bit different. For example, by calling something tall or long. Okay, it is long. That usually would measure long left right, but it's talking about something that is of great measurement. So put these words into the right place. So for body and height, you might have more, more than one that you can put there. Age, Add a few of your own. How you would describe the people in your class? How would you describe me? Don't worry. 
I know I'm a big, fat, ugly English teacher. That's okay. I don't mind. I'm okay. I know who I am. Okay, that was a joke. I, I, I know I'm big, fat, ugly. It's okay. You can laugh at it. But be able to describe yourself and other people. Now, when you have a way to talk about yourself and your family, so what does your mom look like? Take a, a moment, actually think about what your mother looks like. How would you describe her? If you put her into a room of everybody else's mothers, how am I going to find your mother? So if you say, well, my mom has my face, I have my mom's face, I have my mom's eyes, I have my dad's nose. Okay, so I'm looking for somebody who has similar eyes to you. It's not easy to do. But if you give at least a little bit of description, you can probably find close, maybe not exact, but close, and describe what the people look like. And if you don't want to describe me as your teacher, that's perfectly fine. You can describe somebody else. Uh, I won't be offended if you describe another teacher that way. All right, and then I want you to write some questions. Now, you're going to need this while we're working on our group assignment and describing how to get this answer. Now, the answer says she's in her late 20s. So I want you to think, what question could I ask that will get me that answer? Let me try writing it out. Okay, now, part one of the next one, we're gonna read an article, and this is a little bit about the, the two people that we're talking about earlier, and we'll find out things. after. I read this article for you. Try to complete the sentences with words from the article. Uh, not every not every word in there can be used, but see what words you can use to fill in the article. Don't I know you? When Greg Harper was 18, he went to college. He liked his classes and met a lot of people. One day, he went to a soccer game. One of his friends from high school was there with a young woman. This is Anna. She's in my biology class, his friend said. Anna, this is Greg. We went to high school together. Anna looked at Greg. Don't I know you? She asked. But your name is Gary. Everyone was confused. Anna knew another student named Gary, like Greg. Gary was tall, had dark hair, he wore glasses, he was young, and Anna thought he was handsome. In fact, Anna said, you two look like twins. Turns out they are twins. Both Greg and Gary were adopted as babies. They didn't know they had a twin. Greg and Gary still go to the same college and they are both studying history. And this does happen. You can actually meet your twin somewhere else in the world. Now, whether or not it's actually your biological twin like uh, Gary and Greg are, or just someone who looks like you. For example, I have my doppelganger out there and my doppelganger is actually very famous. Um, uh, he has been a professional wrestler for many years and he is known as the big show. Uh, I'm the little show, he's the big show. When I was first came to Korea, people kept calling me the big show teacher and I'm like, okay, I'm okay with that. Uh, the, only differences between the big show and myself are the big show is about 35 centimeters taller than I am. And he has brown eyes and I have blue. Other than that, if you put the, our facial pictures side by side, it's very difficult to tell which one of us is which. Um, I actually did a joke on my mother and I showed her a picture of the big show. I said, Mom, look, I got a good picture taken. She's like, wow, that's a great picture of you. Mom, when did you get this done? I said, that's not me. What? That's not me. That's somebody else. Don't believe me? Come to class and you'll find out. All right. So now to the last part. Now, this is what we'll be doing in class. We're going to be talking to people and imagining or meeting people. And then writing a description of yourself and seeing if we can find out how you would meet yourself. Now, I know some of you have your hair colored and have different styles. 
But when everybody's got their masks on, it's going to be a little bit harder to describe people. Oh, uh, yes, he's the one in the mask. Hello, Mr. Wade. Yes, we're not going to be doing uh, bad Bane jokes, I know. But with masks on, you have to. Describing people and having fun, this is what we're going to be doing and having some fun in class. So have some fun. Get ready. We'll do this part when it comes to class. All right, today we described people. We talked about how you can uh, get help asking people for information. We also talked about describing people and that using the most accurate terms to describe people that we can. We talked a little bit about using antonyms and synonyms. Remember, antonyms are opposite and synonyms are almost the same. Not exactly, but almost the same. All right, well, that will do it for today. Thank you all very much. I know you're gonna have a great time and I will see you in the next lesson. Have a good time. Take care. Bye-bye.